although he was a successful painter in the Netherlands in the 17th century. His name was gradually forgotten after his death at a young age. However, as wealthy American and British collectors began buying up his works, art historians began to re-evaluate them. And by the 20th century, he had become a global superstar. More than 300 years have passed since he was active. And Vermeer has become one of the most beloved painters around the world. Compared to other great masters, Vermeer created a much smaller number of works. With less than 40 pieces surviving. While recent research has revealed new facts. One after another, the reality is that experts differ in their views on the exact number. Works thought to be copies have been identified as Vermeer's works. While other works long thought to be authentic have only recently been determined to be incorrect. By the way, which is Vermeer's best painting? And why? To answer these questions, this video examines and introduces all 37 works. Ranging from works that have been removed from the list of authentic works. To what is considered to be one of the greatest allegories in the history of painting. Today, allegory of painting is considered one of the greatest paintings of all time. However, the painting was not always highly regarded. From the time of its creation until its reappraisal by art historians in the 1860s, the painting remained relatively unknown for almost 200 years. One of Vermeer's few allegorical paintings. The painting depicts the essence of art making. Many people mistakenly believe that the painter in the painting is Vermeer himself. But in fact the painting contains a deeper meaning. The figure symbolizes every painter in history who has ever picked up a brush. Vermeer clearly considered the profession of painter to be a noble one. And the blue garland he paints looks like a tiara to be placed on the heads of royalty. He depicts Cleo, the Greek goddess of history, whose figure is a reference to the allegorical paintings of Cesare Ripa. Cleo is an allegorical figure, but in this painting, she is not depicted in the same anonymized form as the painter. She is an unidealized flesh and blood person, who might have been walking down the street a moment ago. A device that makes the viewer more aware that the painting depicts the real world is the map on the wall. Which shows the 17 provinces of the Netherlands at the time of the painting. The painting makes the viewer aware of the inseparability of art and life. The curtains are opened to show the artist at work. The viewer is then taken into the self-referential overlap in the painting. Behind the curtain, a tension-filled scene is unfolding. It seems that a servant has just brought a letter and handed it to a wealthy woman who seems to be his employer. The viewer's perspective is placed at some distance from the scene, giving the painting a theatrical flavor, as if we were watching actors on stage. The gazes of the two women are indescribable. And it is difficult to resist the gravitational pull created by their ambiguity. The servant, bent at one elbow and looking toward the other woman. To whom she has just given the letter, seems to be smiling slightly. The mistress, lute in hand. Looks up at her with a mixture of anxiety and sadness. What is she so afraid of? The picture of a ship sailing on rough seas hanging in the background may indicate the location of the lover who sent the letter, or, more simply, the woman's inner thoughts after reading her lover's words. The love letter can be interpreted in many ways. This is made possible in large part by Vermeer's skillful arrangement of various symbols and associative objects in the composition. The viewer, placed at a distance from the subject, 
will be driven by an irresistible desire to peel back the layers of veil in order to get closer to the heart of the work. Unlike Vermeer's other works, the allegorical nature of the allegory of faith comes to the fore. Vermeer's iconography in the painting is largely taken from Cesare Ripa's Iconologia, an emblem book which had been translated into Dutch in 1644. The artist used various symbols that Ripa described and illustrated in his book. Along with symbols taken from other books and traditions, two of the four allegorical figures of faith given in Ripa's book provide many of the symbols in the painting including the color of the woman's clothing, her hand gesture, and the presence of the crushed snake and the apple. In his book, Ripa states that faith is the most important of the virtues. One image in the book shows her as a woman, dressed in white and blue. Faith's hand on her breast symbolizes that the virtue rests in her heart. Christ is represented in the cornerstone crushing the snake, and the apple represents original sin, which in Christian doctrine required the sacrifice of the Savior. Ripa describes faith as having the world under her feet, and Vermeer used the symbol quite literally, showing a globe of the earth under the woman's right foot. Perhaps more than any of Vermeer's paintings, this one is a mystery. Who wrote this letter and for what purpose? What is written? And how does the woman reading it react? The answers to these questions are not easy to find. But Vermeer has scattered some clues throughout the painting. For example, the map hanging on the wall suggests a distant land where the letter might have been written. Also, objects around the woman, such as pearls placed haphazardly on the table, suggest that she interrupted the work she had been doing to read this letter. The large bulging clothes suggest that she may have been pregnant. Taken together, these hints suggest a narrative that the woman may have received urgent news from her companion abroad. In any case, this painting is a masterpiece of Vermeer's sense of stillness, silence, introspection, and interiority. He has placed chairs, tables, and walls around this woman, confining her to a small space. Her body is always inside the room, and her consciousness is always trapped inside herself. The geographer, which has been considered a counterpart to the astronomer, depicts the intersection of scientific knowledge and the search for religious revelation. Based on the image of a scientist of the time, this work may have been commissioned. However, researchers do not know exactly who this person is or whether he actually existed, considering that at the time Vermeer painted this work. The Netherlands had become known in Europe as a country with a thriving cartographic industry. There were probably many people like him. Vermeer describes the profession as more than simply an attempt to understand the world. The kimono-like garments worn by the geographer indicate that he is a man of vision in the ideal sense of the word. The globe in the background also suggests the distant foreign lands from which the clothes may have been made. The painting is also an expression of how the inner life of a human being is influenced by the world around him. The geographer suddenly lifts his gaze to look out the window, where there is a beam of sunlight streaming in through the window. The light blurs the boundary between inside and outside, both physically and psychologically. Vermeer dealt with themes of morality and religion in several of his works. And in this painting they are expressed relatively clearly. 
In this seemingly innocuous scene, a woman prepares to weigh the gems laid out before her. Like other women in Vermeer's work, the woman in this painting is bathed in dramatic light and is alone in quiet reflection, undistracted. Although the work she is doing is routine, Vermeer has given it religious significance by placing the painting of The Last Judgment, in which the human soul is weighed by God, in the background. Like the pearls in front of the woman. This work suggests that no matter how many treasures one may collect in this world, if one has an evil soul, he or she will be cast into hell. Perhaps the woman in the painting is aware of this. With its soft light and seemingly simple screen composition, this painting is one of Vermeer's masterpieces. However, this fact makes it difficult to see how unique this painting is in the context of Dutch painting of the time. Vermeer was adept at combining existing expressions and techniques to create his own style. And this painting is a perfect example of that. For Dutch painters of the same period, female milkmaids were a common motif, and Vermeer was aware of this. However, in the case of other painters, these women were represented in relation to others around them, and were never depicted alone. Milkmaid means a female laborer engaged in milking. In Vermeer's painting, the servant is alone. Pensive as she pours milk from a jug into a wide-mouthed container. Paintings of milkmaids often have erotic overtones. And this one is no different. However, Vermeer is distancing himself from the viewer's intentions and trying to make us aware that we are voyeurs. This is where Vermeer's sympathy for women appears. For example, the diagonal lines on the windowpane direct our gaze to the servant's arms, emphasizing the difficulty of her labor. This is also a painting that celebrates a profession that is generally looked down upon as something done by those of low status. At first glance, this painting is an ordinary landscape of Vermeer's hometown. Upon closer inspection, however, one can see how elaborate the technique is. Vermeer, who created a wide range of effects with his skillful brushwork, intentionally applied the paint unevenly to create the rough texture of the bricks, which accentuates the authenticity of the painting. The surface of the water is rendered in cool blue brushstrokes, and the ripples appear to be gently spreading. The painting has been controversial, with many wondering how on earth it was possible to create such a sense of realism. One theory that has been supported is that a camera obscura was used. While it is certainly possible that Vermeer used a camera obscura, it is unclear to what extent this influenced his painting. In any case, this painting is a good example of Vermeer's talent for drawing the viewer into his world through detailed depiction. This painting is thought to be a counterpart to Lady Seated at a Virginal. The fact that the painting depicts a woman playing a harpsichord-like instrument leads one to believe that love is the theme. Although the identity of the paintings on the wall has not been determined, the small landscape on the left is believed to be the work of Jan Wijnands or Allert van Everdingen, a Dutch painter who was a contemporary of Vermeer. The Cupid holding a card in his left hand, also on the right, is said to be the work of Caesar van Everdingen, Allert's brother. This motif is a symbol of fidelity to one's only lover, based on the emblem book of the time, and probably reflects the traditional symbolism of music and sexuality in the virginal tradition.
although not a clear depiction of two lovers. Vermeer may want us to ponder whether this woman is faithful to her lover. From her imposing posture and the carefully furnished room, this wealthy young woman appears impeccable. But sometimes, appearances are not always what they seem. This question will never be answered. This painting is the smallest work Vermeer ever produced. Yet it is packed with an astonishing wealth of detail within its small size. The bundles of threads hanging from the cushion at the woman's side are so clearly rendered that one could almost count them. In contrast, other parts of the painting are a bit blurred. But this is intentional. Art historians are almost certain that the camera obscura, a precursor to photography, was used in the creation of this painting. This kind of seeing by optical instruments is also produced by human vision. When we stare at something, we are so focused on it that we cannot see other things clearly. In Vermeer's time, mastering lace knitting was considered essential to a girl's education. And paintings with this subject matter were not uncommon. Other painters, however, used a more drawn composition, depicting a young woman working in the home with her mother or other older women. In contrast, Vermeer's composition is so close together that one can almost read the woman's state of mind as she weaves lace. However, no matter how accurately her expression is depicted, it is impossible to tell what she is thinking. Researchers have looked at the book on the table next to her, trying to find the answer. But nothing conclusive has been found. This sober and serene painting once contained a much more disturbing element. Vermeer had originally painted a man and his dog beside a dozing maid. What was the man doing with the maid? In a room with a delicious-looking apple on the table? Vermeer decided to exclude the man from the painting, and we will never know why. The painting completed through these circumstances was the first work to depict a motif. That Vermeer would take up frequently in the following years. In, A Girl Asleep, the first work to deal with the subject matter that made him famous. A single woman in a painting and her psychological portrait. Vermeer's skill is on full display. Vermeer intersperses elements that make the viewer wonder. But does not give easy answers. The maiden's slightly upturned lips give us only vague clues as to the dream she is dreaming. But there are enough hints to probe into her mind. The door behind her is open and the key is stuck in the lock. Perhaps she is neglecting her work because she is drunk. The composition of this painting also suggests the style Vermeer would later move toward. Here, deep depth is expressed, allowing us to peer into the next room. And a chair placed at an angle in the foreground partially obstructs the viewer's field of vision. With such unexpected compositions, Vermeer's paintings sometimes give a cinematic impression. This portrait is probably the most widely seen Vermeer work and one of the most famous paintings in history. But is the painting in fact the masterpiece it is reputed to be? In terms of technique, it is almost certainly a masterpiece. But in terms of theme, not so much. Formally, however, the painting is unquestionably brilliant, with Vermeer's masterful use of the dramatic light effects for which he is known. The girl's lips, eyes, and earrings, which seem to emerge from the pitch blackness, shine against an invisible light source. This is not necessarily Vermeer's own expression his contemporaries, such as Mikhail Swiertz, also attempted this. But Vermeer has mastered this technique with this painting. This painting, which may have been a companion to the geographer, 
appears to simply be a representation of an astronomer at work. However, as is typical of Vermeer's work, which imbues ordinary everyday scenes with deep meaning. This painting has a depth that cannot be understood at first glance. The kimono-like clothing worn by the astronomer suggests his extensive knowledge and connections with foreign countries. On the other hand, his crammed desk and small room hint at his hermit-like lifestyle, where he rarely goes out. The contrast between inside and outside seen in this painting stirs the hearts of the viewers. Because it depicts an astronomer, it seems to represent a secular way of thinking. But the paintings on the wall incorporate religious content. This painting of baby Moses is attributed to Peter Leary. But by linking the astronomer with the biblical character who liberated the interim, he uses overt Christian iconography to create an image of the liberation of the spirit. The newly released spirit of the astronomer is manifested in the palm of his hand with his fingers pointing outward. As if I knew that my work might not change the way I saw the world. Experts are divided as to whether this work contains a cryptic message to the viewer. Some say it is a painting about purity. Focusing on the pearls on the necklace and the mirror the woman is looking in. While others say it is a highly stylized genre painting. Curator Arthur Wheelock once said, one of the hallmarks of Vermeer's genius is that the meaning of his paintings is not easily deciphered, especially his meticulously conceived genre scenes. This is clearly visible in the painting. Even so, this painting may be too elusive compared to other related works such as Woman Holding a Balance and Woman Reading a Letter, it is difficult to guess what the person in this painting is thinking. But there's no doubt that the dramatic lighting effects and stylish clothing add to the visual comfort. Art historians are divided on who the woman in this painting is. One theory says she was a prostitute chatting with customers in a brothel. Another says she was a servant whose work was interrupted by a flirtatious man. What's even more interesting is that the model may be Vermeer's wife. But with so little background information, it's hard to determine exactly what's going on here. What makes this painting even more bizarre is its boldly stylized composition. The large man drawn in the left half of the screen has his back turned to us and his face is hidden in the shadows and cannot be clearly seen. Instead, our eyes are drawn to the woman in the light. She looks very happy as she speaks with a man with a big smile on her face. The proportions of the two figures, with emphasis on perspective, are said to support the theory that Vermeer used the camera obscura, which was the source of the photograph, when deciding on the composition of the painting. This painting is famous for being stolen by members of the Irish Armed Group in 1974. But it is not clear what is going on inside the painting. As in the love letter, a servant stands next to a wealthy woman. But in this painting the woman is writing the letter rather than reading it. I don't know what it says, but it has obviously been rewritten many times and the marble floor is littered with papers and sealing wax. Meanwhile, the servant is looking out the window, where the sunlight is streaming in. The picture in the background may be a clue as to the contents of the letter. It depicts a scene from the Old Testament book of Exodus, in which Pharaoh's daughter finds baby Moses in the reeds. In Vermeer's time, it represented the power of God to mediate between people who are in conflict. Woman writing the letter. 
may want to make peace with the person she is sending the letter to. At least she seems absorbed in what's in front of her. This painting depicts a woman playing a harpsichord-like instrument. Dirk Jaspers van Baboren's The Procurus is displayed. This work has a more functional atmosphere than Lady Standing at a Virginal. It's difficult to guess what Vermeer's intentions. The appeal of this painting lies in the fact that many elements that might be helpful in understanding the meaning are intentionally cut out. Leaving the viewer's imagination as they look at the room outside the picture plane. Such paintings baffle Vermeer researchers. If this painting depicts a moment of seduction, does Vermeer also have a moral critique in mind? Or is it just a scene description? There is a big difference between this painting and the one on the right side of it. The latter is Dirk Jaspers van Baboren's The Procurus, once owned by Vermeer's family, and is a painting of a woman working in a brothel. The figures are drawn close together for dramatic effect. Compared to the Procurus, the concert, has muted colors and wider spaces between characters. Giving it a much quieter impression. What makes this painting even more mysterious is the man at the piano. Whose face is not visible as his back is turned to the viewer. But it is clear that he is not playing. The woman on the left is playing the keyboard. And he seems to be admiring the magnificent rural landscape painted on the back of the piano lid. The outside world is emphasized by the piano painting and the landscape painting on the wall. But it is an interesting composition considering that the painting depicts an enclosed indoor space. And the windows are outside the picture plane. Vermeer liked to depict women writing and reading letters. At first glance, this painting appears to be one of his own. But it is actually a very dramatic piece that stands out from the rest. The servant in this painting appears to have brought a letter to the woman writing the letter. Informing her of an emergency situation. And although the text cannot be seen, the woman's worried expression tells us this. The use of light is also dramatic. Making the two figures stand out against the pitch black background. This is completely different from the detailed representations of beautifully appointed rooms in many of Vermeer's works. And it is as if the characters were separated from such domestic spaces and brought here. Creating a mystique that is difficult to decipher. Since the key to the mystery is only a few objects on the table. The viewer's eyes naturally fall on the box placed there. This box is not a jewelry box, but for letters. It has a unique design that indicates it was made in the Indo-Pacific region. And would have reminded contemporary viewers of a far-flung foreign country. This painting, which uses only a few props to evoke a vast world, is a legacy to Vermeer's masterful skill. Among Vermeer's twelve works depicting musical instruments. This one is famous as a masterpiece. The room where the virginal, a type of keyboard instrument, is taught. Has a deep depth and is drawn with a strict and precise perspective. Therefore, it has been pointed out that it may have been drawn exactly as the image. Obtained with the camera obscura. Each element, such as the clearly realistically drawn, highly floor tiles, window frames, and tablecloth, is beautiful and is a sophisticated painting. The woman's head reflected in the mirror is turned in a direction that cannot be seen in real life.
and a stringed instrument, symbolizing love, is placed on her floor. This painting depicts a woman playing a miniature Virginia, while an elegantly dressed man gazes intently at her. And the virginal is depicted as one of the items that expresses love. Up until this work, Vermeer had struggled to express interior spaces with depth. But by placing a table in front of him, he succeeded in depicting a spacious space while maintaining accurate perspective. The mirror above the virginal reflects the woman's upper body, as well as an easel that alludes to Vermeer himself. The light coming in through the window must have cast various shadows on the walls, but the shadows of the upper bodies of the woman and man were nowhere to be seen. Vermeer deliberately omitted them in order to create clear and bright images. The model for this painting may have been a woman Vermeer knew well. Namely his wife Katharina Bolnes. Art historians say they can't say for certain. But one thing is certain the woman in the painting is not an idealized image of a woman. But a very real human being with a strong presence. It's not like she's so absorbed in writing. That she doesn't realize she's being watched. She is staring back at us, the viewers. I don't know what she's writing. This seems to be the artist's preference for mysterious settings. But from the small smile on the woman's face, we can infer that the content of her letter is not sad. Paintings like this one are called pearl pictures. The term, pearl pictures, refers to paintings in which the model's jewelry is depicted using light effects and finished with dots of whitish paint to emphasize its luster. This work is one such painting in which the viewer's eye is immediately drawn to the young woman's earrings. The eye is drawn to a very small object in a large space. Like other Vermeer works, this painting depicts a scene of music playing. Therefore, although it does not clearly depict a love scene, some believe that there may be erotic overtones. As evidence, some researchers have pointed out that the lute on the floor indicates that an encounter is about to take place or has already taken place. Also, the map hanging on the wall suggests the world that extends outside of this painting. Currently in the collection of the Metropolitan Museum of Art in New York. This work was thought to be the work of Gabriel Metsu until the 19th century. Because of its representation of soft light streaming in through a window. However, researchers now believe that it is Vermeer's masterpiece. The fruit of a style and theme that he repeatedly used. One such example is the scene of a woman standing alone in an unpopular room. Here, the focus is on the woman's inner self, her eyes downcast and quietly lost in thought. But it is not clear what she is thinking. Compared to the intense appeal of Vermeer's other works. This painting may seem subdued. However, this work is a good example of Vermeer's technique of giving symbolic meaning to ordinary objects of daily life. The jug held by the woman with the window open is made of silver, indicating that she is wealthy. The young woman in this painting has stood in front of a white wall for centuries. But in 2019, the impression of this painting will change drastically. The Old Masters Gallery in Dresden, which owns it, has released the results of an X-ray study, revealing that a painting of Cupid hung behind her. This discovery led to the assumption that the letter was sent by her lover.
And it was also discovered that the composition of this painting is similar to Vermeer's Woman Reading a Letter. However, in contrast to Woman Reading a Letter, which uses subdued colors, Vermeer's talent for capturing the changes in color caused by light is on full display in this painting. This is particularly evident in the way some of the blue window frames are brightened by sunlight and in the way sunlight spills over the red carpet on the table. Vermeer painted similar motifs after this painting, but none is as colorful as this one. Furthermore, the curtain hanging on the right side is unique. Rather than being a part of the room where the woman in the painting is, it is a meta device hung in the space on our side of the viewer. It is wide open so that we can see the other side. Other painters working in Delft at the time depicted curtains in their interior paintings to achieve a similar effect. Vermeer enhanced the voyeuristic nature of this device by placing it in a space that captures a casual moment in time. This painting may have been created in the same year as The Girl with the Wine Glass. A work with a very similar subject matter and setting. In both paintings, a man is approaching a young woman, who is also being served alcohol. Suggesting that she may have had too much to drink. In the case of the wine glass, the woman has just finished the contents of her glass. Another common feature is the stained glass window, an allegory of temperance. Perhaps the artist is appealing to the viewer not to commit the same immoral acts as the characters in the paintings. The two works, however, give completely different impressions. This painting gives the impression that we have seen something we should not have seen. The young woman is smiling at us as if to show off her sexuality. In comparison, this painting is much more restrained. This painting may be more subdued than The Girl with the Wine Glass. But it is clearly superior in terms of its skillful use of color. In particular, the depiction of the area around the blue curtains is so superb that it would be difficult for any other artist to duplicate it. The light passing through the thin fabric in the corner of the room is reflected on the wall, and the aquamarine and dark shadows are beautifully rendered. There is an awkward tension in this painting, with the woman's startled expression. Vermeer often incorporated popular subjects into his work. In this painting, too, the music theme and the picture of Cupid hanging on the wall must have been recognized by contemporary viewers as a scene of seduction. In addition to this, it is worth noting that the woman's dress is the kind that servants wear in their private lives. The man is so close to her that he comes to see her after work hours. What is depicted in this painting is not simply a scene of a woman reading sheet music with her lover. It is also a scene of sensual suspense. The woman is looking at the viewer on this side of the screen. While the man seems unaware that he is being watched. Has she been caught in the act of an ill-advised love affair? Are we witnessing something we are? Not supposed to see? Vermeer never provides a clear answer to these questions. This painting, strongly influenced by Peter de Hooch, is one of the most representative paintings of Delft's cityscape of the period. Peter also painted outdoor scenes, as in this painting, which shows people going about their daily lives in open doorways and alleys. It is not only Peter de Hooch's style that Vermeer used as a reference. Both painters combined elements of buildings to make their paintings look better. And they painted landscapes that looked like Delft, but had details that differed from the actual Delft streetscape. Incidentally, researchers at the Rijksmuseum 
tracked down the address of this location in 2015. But the current cityscape has changed dramatically since this painting. As the researchers praise the meticulous depiction. The buildings have been painstakingly painted with peeling paint and bricks that are leaning or worn away. In contrast, the figures are intentionally rendered vaguely. Their faces blurred. This allows the viewer to freely compensate for them in his or her imagination. Or to imagine himself or herself standing there. Like, Girl with a Pearl Earring, this painting is of the Trompe Loy type which depicts the bust of a fictional persona. A common practice in the 17th century to demonstrate the artist's skill. For this reason, this work looks very similar to Girl with a Pearl Earring. Although there are significant differences in the way it is painted. The similarities between the two works are so great that there is even a theory that they were once a pair. The girl is depicted in an empty, dark space. While an unnaturally bright light illuminates her face. As in, girl with a pearl earring, the white parts of the eyes are shining. But they are less emphasized and the tone is more muted. The pale blue drapery covering her bent arm in the foreground. Is also painted in the same soft tones. Even though it does not have the same intensity as Girl with a Pearl Earring. It is a fine work with its own charm. The composition of this painting, in which several figures are crowded together in a dimly lit area, has been considered unusual for Vermeer, who was known for depicting scenes of women alone in unpopular rooms. The disreputable setting of the brothel is also unusual among his works. This painting, which references a painting by Dirk Jaspers van Baboren, owned by Vermeer's mother-in-law, belongs to a genre known as Merry Company, which depicts people drinking and reveling in revelry. As is typical of this genre, among the people enjoying themselves and immersed in their own world. There is only one man who looks in our direction and smiles. The viewer is made aware that he is a voyeur. The moment his eyes meet this man's. Vermeer would later use settings. In which the viewer is peering into the painting with high frequency. It depicts a man offering wine to a woman wearing a red satin skirt. Symbolizing seduction. One of the characteristics of this work. Is that it has an erotic atmosphere compared to Vermeer's other works. In the back of the screen, you can also see a man who seems to have fallen asleep while smoking a cigarette. Propped up on one elbow. The stained glass depicts a woman. Holding the reins of a horse, suggesting temperance. Can see that she is issuing a warning to men. And women who are trying to indulge in pleasure. Temperance in this work is a warning against becoming addicted to alcohol and tobacco. And at the same time. Women are told to make the most of their beauty and charm to attract men and maintain their virginity. As stated in the etiquette books of the time. It is to encourage people to make efforts to have a happy marriage. Without losing their true feelings. The composition of this painting is unique among Vermeer's works. And compared to similar works by other artists. The woman in this painting is smiling. Picking up a musical instrument, and staring at something outside the picture plane. Who or what is she staring at? And why is she doing so? Musical performance scenes are often indicative of seduction. But in the case of this work. There are so few other elements to support this that it is impossible to know for sure. This painting has a notable art history episode. 
The Philadelphia Museum of Art currently has a painting that looks exactly like this one. And for a long time it was thought to be the original work. However, in 1928, art. Historians determined that the Philadelphia work was a reproduction. The basis for this was the woman's hairstyle, which lacked curly hair. The curly hair trend fell out of fashion. About ten years after the painting was made, because Vermeer had died by then. Recently, however, since the opening of the Vermeer exhibition. At the National Museum of Fine Arts, Amsterdam. The debate has resurfaced as to whether the painting at the Philadelphia Museum of Art is the true work. Fans of Vermeer may find this early work disconcerting. It is so far removed from the interior paintings. He would come to paint later in his career. In this painting, created shortly after. Vermeer completed his apprenticeship at the Delft Artists Guild. One of the nymphs surrounding the ancient Greek goddess Diana washes her feet. Such mythological subjects were not uncommon at the time. The painting, which is both comforting and mysterious, has a certain dramatic effect. The figures are dressed not in ancient Greek clothing, but in the clothes of the period in which the artist lived. What further strengthens the mysterious impression of this painting is the unusual use of light. The light source is outside the painting. And it is impossible to identify what it is. There was a time when this painting looked ordinary. The blue sky was painted in the upper right corner. However, the Morichuis Museum in The Hague, which owns the work, discovered about 20 years ago that the sky was added after Vermeer's death. Subsequent restorations have made it look exactly as Vermeer envisioned it. When people think of Vermeer's paintings, few people think of this kind of work. It is not surprising, then, that they lack the rich detail that characterizes his work. In this biblical scene, sisters Martha and Mary are entertaining Jesus in their home. The young Vermeer probably painted this picture to gain a foothold as a painter, following in the footsteps of an already successful artist. Some researchers have also suggested that the painting was painted for the Catholic congregation in Delft. He had married Katharina Bolnes a few years before he painted this picture, and had converted to her Catholic faith shortly before that. The painting shows glimpses of Vermeer's talent, known for his exquisite composition. Note, for example, that Jesus' fingers point toward Mary. This directs the viewer's gaze away from Martha, who is distracted by the preparation of the meal and does not notice his halo, and toward Mary. Although it lacks the vivid visual effects that characterized Vermeer's later works, it is also an early example of a female figure against the backdrop of a domestic room. According to the National Gallery of Scotland, which owns the work, this is the largest painting Vermeer ever produced. This work has long puzzled scholars for various reasons. One of these is that it is painted on a wooden panel, which is unusual among Vermeer's works, which are primarily canvas-based. The content of the picture is also a little strange. A young woman seated in her chair does not lean against her back. She rests her elbows on it and faces the viewer. This strange composition has puzzled art historians. In particular, the direction of the decoration on the top of the back of the chair and its position in relation to the young woman are unnatural. With the chair facing in an impossible direction. One of Vermeer's few paintings with an explicitly religious theme. 
This painting depicts a Roman Catholic saint purifying the body of a martyr killed during persecution. Behind her lies the murdered man. And we see his bleeding body and his severed head. Her sister Pudentiana walks in the distance behind her. She squeezes the blood-cleaned sponge over the container. Vermeer had converted to Catholicism two years before painting this painting. And many art historians see this as an expression of his dedication to his new faith. There are no bad paintings by Vermeer. But there are some that lack impact compared to others. This picture is like that. This work has a barren feel, with almost no elements other than the chair on which the woman is sitting. And a keyboard instrument reassembling a harpsichord. In fact, there has been a long-standing debate as to whether or not this painting was created by Vermeer. However, over the past few decades, strong evidence has emerged to support the authenticity of this work. Expert opinion is divided as to whether this painting is genuine. The National Museum of the Netherlands claims it was Vermeer's hand, as was long believed, but the National Gallery of Art in Washington which owns it, has determined that it is not the original work. In any case, it certainly pales in comparison to Vermeer's later works depicting women indoors. A composition that captures a person directly in the front. Looks too frontal and awkward. When compared with Girl with a Red Hat. Which is said to depict the same model, the difference is clear. In Girl with a Red Hat, the woman's expression is full of emotion. And the tapestry hanging behind her is well detailed. But in Girl with a Flute, the background is vague and overall it weakens the impression of the picture. Thank you very much for watching until the end. If you enjoyed this video. Please consider giving it a thumbs up and subscribing to the channel. Well then, let's meet in the next video. See you again.